Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Enfield. I'm Mike Tippo. Glad you're able to join us today. This program is one that I, we've done every year for probably the last five or six years, and one that we, I really enjoy a lot, and I hope that you will too. We're going to be talking today about the Enfield Fourth of July town celebration, which will be held on July 10, 11, and 12 this year. And with me are three of the committee members. We've got Earl Preventure, who's the president. Mike Emmons is the assistant chairman, and Greg Stokes is the director of marketing. Right. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you with us. Good Thanks. to be here. Thanks for having us, Mike. Thank you, Earl. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself, Earl, so people can get to know you a little bit. Well, in a nutshell, I guess uh, been in Enfield since I've been 16. My family is, goes way back in Enfield, but I've been actually here since 16, so about 40 years now. And uh, you're old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Time's marching on, kid. <laughs> Time's marching on. Um, been involved with the 4th of July celebration for, I don't know, around 10 years, I guess it's been. Um, worked in different parts of it, doing soda and all that type of stuff, and now uh, doing operations, which is kind of the backbone of, of the setup and all that with a bunch of other people. So, and uh, also uh, recently, the last couple of years, uh, was uh, elected by the peers on the committee as the president of the organization. Very good. So. Good. Mike? Um, I've been born and raised in Enfield, Connecticut. I've been here my whole life. And I've been coming to the celebration as long as I can remember. Um, this will actually be my 25th year volunteering, so I started when I was just a little guy with the, with the Boy Scouts. Uh, this is my sixth year on the committee, though. Uh, second as assistant chairman. I was also lucky enough to be voted in as assistant chairman when Earl moved up to the presidency. Very good. Good, Greg. Uh, I've been I've been in town for 20 years. Actually, this uh, this summer I came here 20 years ago in 1995, and um, and my wife is a lifelong resident from from Enfield, and so so this is her home. And uh, after getting here, um, you know, one thing that she had always been involved in with her family. Uh, her brother-in-law for a while was our entertainment director, and uh, and uh, and so uh, she volunteered. So I started volunteering. Then we started sponsoring, and uh, about four years ago, um, I came on the committee uh, as the marketing director. I've been doing it ever since, so we've enjoyed it. But we go back. I I looked at our basement. We have an, a volunteer shirt. It's a green one. I think it's from 1986. Wow. And uh, so we have. I saw it the other day. I'm going. Wow. That's 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 been there for quite a while. So could that have been security? I don't know what it was. All I know is says yeah. volunteer on it, and yeah. I thought to myself, and I asked my wife when it was. She says I think that was '86 or '87. Wow. So, wow. so the family has history, but I've been, you know, part of it a shorter time, but I've enjoyed it. So. Yeah, great, very good. So you could, all of you, got a lot of background and experience with the committee, which is great. The event. This is the tough question I'm going to ask you, but uh, I want you to do your best with it, Earl. <laughs> Give us an idea of what's going to happen on that weekend of July 10, 11, and 12. What's going on, and where is it? Well, it's on the Enfield Town Green, down right in front of Town Hall, and we pretty much uh, take the area is just uh, covered with, we have the Taste of Enfield food booths, we have Corporate Row, um, uh, kids rides and games, uh, concerts, free concerts, and the, the acts are uh, uh, national acts that um, the other guys will talk a little bit about, but um, um, so it's just, you know, thousands of people on the town green. It's just a great weekend. Starts on Friday at 5 on the 10th and works right through the weekend till Sunday night with the fireworks at 945. All right. Something I think it's important, especially, you know, today we're kind of watching our nickels and dimes a little bit more than maybe we have in the past. But uh, what is this going to cost a family of four to come up to the town green and spend an evening or an afternoon here? Well, we, we, um, we try to do is make everything free. The only thing that does we do have a charge for through a token system uh, is is any beverages that you you might have or the taste of Enfield because the vendors are coming in, um, you know they're local vendors and area vendors so they charge for their products different amounts four or five dollars for mm -hmm. whatever it is that yeah. you that you want to get and there's a whole list of things um, that you can get as well but the, the, our big our staple or our, our background is is that we want everything free for the kids as far as rides and games bounce houses uh, the concerts are free you know acts wow. where you pay 40 50 dollars for a ticket other places it's free just to come down and yeah. put your uh, your blanket or chair on the green so yeah. great great 
about concerts, Mike, uh, what, what kind of groups do you have coming this year? Well, we, we kind of have a, a mixture of different types of acts. We we try to go as local as possible with our openers, and then we mm-hmm. kind of veer towards regional, and then we try to hook the national acts for, for the later shows. Um, on Friday, we have a local band, Derek and the Fun Bags. They'll be coming down. They play a lot of uh, rock and some covers. Um, after them, we have... Look, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. They're a well-known They're, band. Yeah. They are, yeah. yeah. And they come on at 7 o'clock. Uh, 9.30, we'll be ending the night on Friday with Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, another another very, very large band. Moving into Saturday, we have a legendary jam band, Max Creek. They're opening up at the uh, same time, 5 o'clock. Um, we have The Wait, which does a lot of covers of the band, the band if you're familiar uh-huh. with them. Um, they'll be playing at seven o'clock, and we're closing out the night with uh, Junior Marvin's Whalers. That's he's one of the original band members of uh, Bob Marley's band. Oh yeah, sure. Um, Sunday night. That'll be a fun show. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. we're hoping so. <laughs> Sunday night, closing out the uh, closing out the weekend, we have Amy Gallatin and Stillwaters, um, and then we have everybody's favorite, the Hartford Symphony Orchestra, which um, through a generous grant by Mass Mutual, they're able to come back every year and they we, are magnificent we love having them they're um, wonderful yep they play up to the fireworks which yeah. uh which kick off at 9 45. and and this year our understanding is, is that there's gonna be like a 60 voice choir uh joining them wow. so so you know to me you put the music and the choral together wow. um it uh, it's gonna be it's great really nice. really, yeah, yeah very nice that's and, gonna be really good uh, oh yeah wow wow they always do a wonderful job oh, yeah you know. they don't disappoint no they certainly yeah. don't yeah so. they, they're great they're very good and where are you, where are these people going to be performing from? There be uh, you know we went through the grant that Mass Mutual gives, we're able to have a, a top notch stage and lighting, and sound, and, uh, and and they make that possible. And um, so it's going to be on that stage. And uh, we we're thankful for our sponsors, Family Ford, actually helps sponsor some of this. So it's the Family Ford stage, as yeah. we call it. And um, and uh, the sound is great. You can be anywhere on the green and hear the music and. Uh, uh, but it'll be right here, right next to the gazebo. If you won't miss the stage. Every year uh, when I, uh, we get, the first thing that gets set up is our stage, and volunteers and folks are helping that. And I drive onto the green, and it's just the inspiration. We know the stage is up. We know we're getting going. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. it's actually inspiring to see it go up. And it's then, a beautiful oh, stage. Oh, yeah, it really is. So. Really nice. Yeah. It's a long way from the gazebo, let me put it that way. Yeah. A long way from the gazebo or the, uh, the flatbed trucks my wife yeah, told me about. Yeah, so I've heard about yeah. those too. Yeah, so, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, but, uh, very good. You mentioned the taste of Enfield. Earl, why don't you tell us who's going to be here and how does that whole thing work? Well, okay, so along North Main Street, we line booths. We set the booths or tents up, if you will, you actually all the way close, along. You, you North Main Street. Streets get closed down from wow. Thursday the 9th at 8 a.m., until Monday morning at noon, or Monday at noon, yeah. uh, the North Main Street will be closed, so there are alternate routes around, whether it's Alden Avenue or High Street, to get around there, but there are barriers set there so that that whole street gets shut down, and um, the tents get put right along North Main Street, and this year we have uh, uh, a number, I'll just list them off, uh, and you can uh, look further on our website. You'll see what they're serving, mm-hmm. but we have Old Country Deli, yep. um, Old Country uh, Smokehouse, Angelo's Fried Dough, Backyard Bar and Grill, Crepes Tea House, Rita's uh, Italian Ice, Ben & Jerry's, doesn't need any further explaining, yep. uh, Plaza Azteca, right here from Enfield, mm-hmm. Billy Bob's Sweet Corn, yep. and Little Mark's Big Barbecue. Wow. So... Those are our vendors, and their items will be on our website, so you could see if there's something that I think pretty much fits every every taste. And if you're going to purchase some of the food, they'll all have signs out in front that tell you what the token amount is. The tokens are all one dollar each, and uh, you, we'll have a booth that sells tokens in several areas on the green. We mm-hmm. try to make it convenient, yep. and um, you know you can just bring those up, and that's your tender for getting any items at the at the food booths. And the committee runs a soda booth? Soda, and yeah, we'll have all different sodas and stuff, okay. and that's usually um, run by the committee, but you wouldn't know our volunteers, you know, you wouldn't know it's a separate vendor, but it's we're the ones who actually do the sodas, right, right. and our volunteers work the booth. Right. As Bill Lee, Bill Lee always says, you'll have some tasty adult beverages? There will be adult beverages, yep, as well, which are in a separate area. Positive ID is, is uh, uh, you have to have positive ID or you won't regardless of your age make sure you have your id 
or you won't be served. What is available there? Um, we work through Hartford Distributors, so we have a full, ri full line of um, Budweiser products uh -huh. and things like that. And we also have um, Powder Hollow Brewery, a local that's um, interesting. Brewery is going to is going to be coming in as well. We have assorted wines if if people uh, yeah. want something a little bit different too. Good. And we have I think uh, Sam Adams also. Yes. Yeah. So oh, we have Sam Adams. Very so, good. So so with the new brewery and Sam Adams, uh, people can get a taste of something that's yeah, a not, good variety. Not good too variety. Uh, used to. Very good. Good. Now you said to bring an ID. Do I have to keep showing an ID every time I want to buy a beer? No, we use a wristband system and. The wristband system, once your ID is checked by one of our ID checkers, you will get a wristband. They are put on fairly tight so mm -hmm. that we can, you know, avoid any fraudulent activity right. with them and things like that. But yeah. uh, um, the, the band itself doesn't cost anything. As long as you have your ID, yeah. you can get the wristband if you're of age. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can go then go to the, either of the adult, the adult booth and, yeah. you know, purchase yeah. there as well. You have, you have one beer booth? Uh, we have one... one We'll actually have a kiosk this year. We're doing a kiosk, which will be up right in front of where the town hall is. Oh. Um, we moved it. We've had it in the past down on North Main Street. And, uh -huh. um, we want to uh, bring it up here a little bit closer to, to the center of attention. Okay. So, As well as a large beer booth. And there's a, then there's a large uh -huh. uh, tent that yeah. you know serves. Good. 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 Now, you have teen area, I understand? Oh, yeah. We have uh, teen zone, and uh, uh, they have... Uh, uh, great activities for, for young people and uh, uh, last year they had the foam machine which was fun they had the volleyball out there the sports and they have the battle of the bands which is uh, Saturday night and uh, that goes from about 8 o'clock until uh, till 10 o'clock and, and this year we're having you know we have some great sponsors Mass Mutual, HDI, Budweiser as you mentioned Town of Enfield has been a great help sure. but this year we have coming on as a as a title sponsor is uh, iHeartRadio which has all the radio stations, the river uh, they have 92.5 country. They have they have nine different stations. They come on as a title sponsor, and in that, uh, they're going to be some of their personalities will be here. And we haven't locked into which one yet, but uh, but during the Battle of the Bands, there will be one of the DJs down here to be a part of that. Oh, great! Uh, from from the from Kiss Radio, so uh -huh. so that'll be good. So they're looking like that. So that's great. Well, one of the things about the Teen Zone, Mike, is it's a substance-free area. It's yep. kind of an area that's shut off from the rest of the the, the festival, if you will. And we don't allow any adults to go in there um, other than what our chaperones and, and, and committee members. Uh -huh. But there's no, none of you, they don't mingle in with people that maybe have a beer or anything right. like that. It's right. all separate um, so that the teens can go there and enjoy their peers and, and enjoy the, the music that's put on and the other activities. Like Greg was saying, the, the, the foam, yeah. DJ. dance, yeah. DJ. We yeah, get kind of jealous because we can't jump in there, you know. Yeah, we're, we're busy. Yeah. It looked like a lot of fun. So. Yeah, yeah, it did. yeah, that's great. It does, Very actually. Good. They like that. Uh, I looked over the schedule briefly, and it looks like you've got more than 100 events going on when you count pie-eating contests, uh, you know, different different one-time events, right. as well as the Taste of Enfield's going to be running... Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, uh, all okay. three days. Yeah, all right, very good. Yeah, you have. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a, whatever you're interested in. Right, exhibitions. We have uh, the K9 exhibition. We have the Jaws of Life with our fire departments. I mean, um, the, the, you know, you, you know, I've said this before to people that um, you, it's a destination weekend. It really is. And you can come Friday night and go home, come back all day Saturday, be there for the parade, which we're going to talk about later on, I'm sure. And then, uh, and actually make it a weekend. There's food, there's beverage, and it's it's there's something to do all day long, or observe, or be a part of. And so, yeah, it's a destination weekend. It really is. Something to that effect, uh, I remember reading this years ago that a school teacher did a survey of people in New England and asked them, what do you want to do on your vacation? And the number one thing women wanted to do on their vacation was to go to stores and shop. Now, you filled that gap. You've, you've got something going for that. Tell us about that, Mike. We have um, a jury craft fair that we have on Saturday and Sunday. It starts at 10 a.m. and runs until 5 p.m. Um, we also knew last year, I believe, we started allowing vendors. So you have your Avon, your um, your 31s, your Pampered Chef, and things like that mixed in with there. But a lot of what what's available is going to be handmade products um, from people all over New England. We have people as far, far away as Vermont and Pennsylvania. They all come up here to display their products and hopefully hopefully make a sale or two. Okay. And that's going to go on when? That's Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, for both days. Yeah. All right. 
that's that draws a lot of people surprisingly you know uh, people driving down Enfield Street oh, yeah. people who have no intention of stopping at the booth, don't even know it's here. Yep. And they look out and they see, oh, go, oh, Bill, get a parking spot. we got to go in and take a look at this. Yep. It draws a lot of folks. And it, uh, it's very interesting what people have created, things that uh, are yeah. just amazing. You know, some beautiful artwork, oh, yeah. uh, some really nice things. This isn't just junk. Yeah, a lot of local stuff that people yeah. do that you, you didn't even realize people did that, and it's right. available. Right. And in the same area, we also have our community tables. So we'll have... What is that? Such as the town of Enfield. Um, we have Boy Scouts and, and Cub Scouts set up and kind of tell you a little bit what, about what they're doing. Um, and different community nonprofit organizations, we, we allow them to come in and, and talk with the public and yeah. use that opportunity to interface with people. Now, you have a corporate area also? We do. Um, in the same, same area, we're setting up a corporate grove where the event takes a, a lot to a lot to run mm -hmm. in addition to all the manpower you know we need we need the finances and we have generous sponsors which come on um, we allow them the opportunity to to speak with people and 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 display their products and and tell people a little bit about themselves um, in in um, in exchange for their sponsorship so we're going to have this this area we're going to it's new this year we're a corporate grove um, and kind of a destination we're going to have picnic tables there um, and, and a nice area for people to come up and talk with all the local businesses. Okay, good, good. Uh, now, getting back to the uh, the, ta the uh, what's the word I'm looking Free? for? No, the, the, where people are going to display their wares for sale. Craft fair, yeah. The craft fair, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> if they don't have any money with them, but they have a credit card or a, a uh, you know a bank card, is somewhere they can get some money? Um, yeah, well, on the town green this year, there will be uh, ATMs uh, machines located for the convenience of the public to come. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of folks bring cash down and then go to the tokens booth and stuff. But on the craft fair, obviously, you're you're spending cash there. Right. So we have arranged this year to have uh, ATM machines available for the convenience, so they'll be there. So. That it really is yeah. nice. That's something yeah. brand new. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so. a great idea. I mean, every year we get we get recommendations from the public. Um, yeah, and and we, we try to take try to take them. We try to furlough them into into making the event better. And that's one of the larger suggestions that we've been getting. So we took the effort this year to try and bring that to everybody. Okay. Now that the Higgins School is gone, you've got a lot more area over in that uh, that part of the field that you can set things up. Uh, what are you going to be doing over there? Well, actually, uh, that's, again, the rides and games or kids' rides and games area. Teen zones over the baseball, softball field is. Uh, kids' rides and games is where the Higgins, it used to be in front. Right. Now it'll encompass, there's going to be bounce houses. Uh, there's mini golf set up. There's a Lego zone where Lego, we have Legos under a tent that you just can sit there and build all with the Lego tables that you can just build all day if you want to. Uh, there's going to be three versus three soccer games from infield soccer that's running. Uh, we also run uh, softball games on the baseball field all weekend. Really? Who's uh, playing? Uh, well, this year I believe it's the Demo Democrats. Democratic and Republican, Republican has a team against yeah. each other. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a number of different ones, and if you check the schedule, you'll see all the different uh, people that are on the softball field. Okay. And how would I check that schedule? Where would I find that? infillcelebration.org and I'm sure the guys going to put it on the screen there that's our, our Facebook page and um, we also have I mean that's our website we also have a Facebook page infield F O J T C did I get it right yep. yeah, right, yeah, right and uh, uh, and but everything's on the website you know it's a, it you know on the website you can find out the entertainment list and bios on the of the entertainment acts that are there you can find all the kids teen events you can get the the, the schedule for who's at the taste of infield um, you can go on there and get directions and if you're coming from out of town you can get Get recommendation for lodging it's wow. it's, it's a, yeah it's there for you so you can email there's email a, a site for all of the directors right. there are 26 directors that kind of organize and put this thing together so everybody's email depending on what 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 your interest is mm -hmm. somebody for the taste you can email the taste and it'll go to our directors that are in charge of that and they should be getting get back to you very shortly um, 26 directors probably 300 volunteers that was the next thing I was going to ask you how many people does it take on a Saturday night to run this event Mike on a Saturday night it probably that's one of our busier nights so a good 150 volunteers um, we have innumerable amounts of, of spots that we need to fill and uh, every year 
the community stepped up and they've done a great job of helping us run this event. What kind of jobs would you have available for um, volunteers? Running down the list, anything from selling tokens. Uh, we have what well, we prefer, we love to have our families come and we'll have a whole family come together and sit in the soda booth selling mm -hmm. soda all day. Um, pouring beer, doing ID bracelets, helping set up the craft fair. Uh, we have roadies on stage. Just mm -hmm. anything you can think of, we, we have these volunteers helping us. We could not run the event without them. Yeah. How old do they have to be to volunteer? We, the kids, we like to have a minimum of 14 years old. 14. And they have a, we have a lot of spots over in the Kids Rides and Games and Teen Zone where they can help out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to be selling tokens, we prefer that you're 18 years at, at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be pouring a beer for I'm sure there's some legality behind this. You need to be 21 years yeah. or older. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a little bit of everything. Uh, and the, the nice thing about it is you said we have roadies, but then you also have a place where older people can sit and, and sell tokens. There's we something do, yeah. for every age yeah. group to, to get involved with, yeah, and which we is do. really nice. And we know. do. We have people that have come back year yeah. after year, yeah. and they just love selling tokens. Yeah. They just love checking the IDs, yeah. those the types of things. Yeah. And, and uh, um a lot of people come back every year and volunteer so our volunteers they're the best really yeah. we couldn't well, do it without them you mentioned it now you started when you were how old i was eight years old yes <laughs> eight years old and, and all the way just kept coming every year and there you, you, you know that's unique that's wonderful that's it's great but you're right there are some people you see every year on sunday afternoon selling tokens yeah the husband and wife there every yeah they year. usually have their time frame too, yeah they, they do want. i am a noon to four person you yeah. know yeah uh it, it, it's amazing but uh if you wanted to get involved as a volunteer, Greg, what, what, what should the person do right now? Well, we uh, obviously you can go on the website and, and, and look for the email address for the volunteer at infieldcelebration.org. Uh, we have uh, one more. I'm not sure when this will air, but it's on June 24th uh, here at the town hall, 638, uh, that you can come down and sign up. Uh, oh, that's great. And, and here's in person. A, in person. And, 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 but even if you're not sure what your schedule is and stuff, you can come down on any day and say, listen, I want to help out for three hours and go oh. to the volunteer booth and say, listen, can I volunteer? Great. And they'll give you a volunteer T-shirt, sign you up, and send you there. And so you can come any day and say, I'd like to volunteer. I wasn't planning on it, uh, but right. my schedule freed up, and or I've enjoyed being here. I want to offer something back. So And uh, and, and they're right. We could not do this without, without the volunteers, and, and that they're awesome people. Very good, very good. I think we've covered just about everything, uh, but I'm sure you guys are going to say, hey, wait a minute. We didn't talk about this or that. Hey, wait a minute. Parade. Wait a minute. <laughs> parade right? parade right? a little more fireworks. Did we do fireworks? No, we didn't. We didn't do parade either. We right. mentioned about it. that. Yeah. Right. Our, our parade we briefly this, mentioned it. Yeah, our parade this year, every year we try to do a theme behind our parade. Um, this year it's our farming heritage. I mean, north central Connecticut, we have a pretty rich agricultural um, mm -hmm. history here. So we, we're taking this opportunity, uh, especially with, you know, we have the four town fair in the area and things like that. Yeah. We're taking the opportunity to kind of showcase some of the farms in the area Good. and uh, a little bit of our farming history. Great. So, uh, and we carry that theme over to other areas, um, like the kids' rides and game. We have a sidewalk chalk contest, and they'll have the opportunity to to work with that theme and and hopefully win some prizes. How many bands will you have in the parade this year? I believe we have uh, at a minimum three bands. We have That's a lot right. of a lot of returning favorites that yeah. come back year yeah. after year. Good. One Good. thing about this parade too that, that it's a, it's really community parade because you have a lot of our, our groups in town, businesses, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the community groups, the clubs, they all get in the parade too, and and uh, it's it's a tremendous time because it is really a lot of community folks involved. You're going to recognize people walking down the street yeah. that you know from the supermarket. So. Sure, sure. Where does the parade run? Yeah, I was just going to say I don't think we, I don't think we said that. We're yeah. sitting here. Where is the parade <laughs> and when is it? Yeah. It's actually Saturday morning. Uh, the the 11th at 11 a.m. Okay. and it kicks off uh, what I call the traditional Enfield parade route. We do our Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and the 4th of July parade. I'll start down at the corner of uh, Route 5 and South Road okay. down by the Congregational Church and yeah. march all the way down to Town Hall and it breaks up here at Town Hall once we get down here. So that's a it's a long route. It's a, I think it was two, two in the Eighth or something like change. that. Yeah. So it's a it's a long route. There's yeah. areas all along that that you can find on the side of the road to mm -hmm. to uh, sit and park your car and and watch the parade. It's okay. Now for people that are driving up, does Route Five close at any point? Or? Yeah. Um, route Five will be closing at between ten and ten thirty in the morning. The police department will close it down once. 
uh, once you get there or once people start to, the parade starts to form, they'll close Route 5 down. They have it all set up so that they can, you know, their logistics of, of shutting it down so yeah. that, you know, obviously we can't have any cars driving during the right. parade. But there will be some, you will have to go around. If you're not coming to the parade, you will have to take alternate route, whether it be 91 or yeah. down through the center of town uh -huh. uh, to, to get around the parade okay. route. Now, what if you, we, we know that we're going to have a lot of people coming here. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to park their car? But there's a lot Not of, just for the parade. Yeah, the there's a lot of off-street parking, obviously, in the, in the area here. But one of the things we recommend, and, it, and, and it's very convenient, is to park down at the infield mall. And there's a shuttle bus that the shuttle bus that continuously run from opening to close of the event, and um, and uh, people can park there, grab a bus, and then when they want to go back, go to the bus stop, and, and they're continuously run. You're not yeah. going to wait and stuff. And okay. it's very convenient, and, and and especially if you're a person like me that like to try to fight the crowds if you're trying to drive out somewhere, it's perfect. You get there, and if you got to get back on 91, you can go down Elm Street, you kick on the Hazard Avenue off of Palumba. It's very easy, and I, I recommend that. So okay, right. keeps you out of the the immediate area where some of the roads are getting shut down right, and, right. and traffic just gets it does get heavy in the right in the area of the celebration so you park over there at the uh, square and behind Wendy's there's mm -hmm. a designated spot bus is there within every 15 minutes mm -hmm. it drops you off right in front of the town hall uh, um, and um, I think the other thing we want to talk a little bit about is uh, what you can't bring on the bus or to the green right I think yes. that's probably something that what can you bring with you Probably better to say what you can't bring because we want you to bring, you know, yourself and your family and a uh, blanket and a lawn chair. But you okay. can't bring coolers. You can't bring alcoholic beverages or food. Um, you, no fireworks. No bicycles. No pets. Uh, and that that's 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 for the convenience of the crowds that are here. No snakes. No snakes. We've yeah, had it. please no we snakes. Had that. We've had that. <laughs> um, you know, the 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 food here is going to be tremendous, and the soda for the kids and an adult beverage for the adults. If they want that. It's all here. You can mm -hmm. just come down and and, and relax. But we because we have such a large crowd too if you begin to allow the coolers and more stuff it, and especially pets it, it yeah. makes it inconvenient for the rest right. of the crowd so yeah. so so coming down so. same thing with bikes and skateboards yeah we just it, there's too many people we just can't yeah. somebody would get hurt if right. we allowed people now you can ride your bike down here we have bike racks okay. so you can ride right. down here and park on the your outskirts bike. We yeah on the outskirts yeah. make sure you have a lot right. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So. now what's the grand finale sunday night mike it'll be 9 45 um for the past, oh, I can't count how many, we've had uh, the Zambelli family doing our fireworks. Um, so this year at 9.45, um, hopefully on time this year, we'll be, yeah. uh, we'll be setting off the fireworks, um, sponsored by Leah Auto Group. We're gonna, it's a great show, it runs about what, 25, 25 minutes, with a wonderful grand finale at the end. What we do is we, we set off the fireworks right from Higgins Field, so there's really not a bad spot on the green for you to sit. Um, you, you can see pictures on our website. Uh, you can see them going off right over the town hall. Um, now that Higgins isn't there anymore, yeah. that's a perfect Prime spot. That is, yeah. There's, there's, there's just yeah. great great seating anywhere, anywhere you go. Good, very good. And one more thing I wanted to mention too. We do have a 5K race uh, mm -hmm. on Saturday night, and uh, and we say that. And if you folks are interested in racing, you uh, in that being in that race, they can register online or you can come down that day at four o'clock and register. First 200 get T-shirts uh, for that day. But it's a great race uh, and it's sanctioned, so come on down for that too. So okay. We also have a 1K for the younger yep. kids. Yeah. Yeah. You also have a yeah. very important race, the tricycle. The tricycle <laughs> Sunday at noon. Yep. Yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, that it's just one of the things that I think just uh, it's the epitome We've got, of any you having the competition for the the older folks with the race and with the with the young kids with the race and then you get the younger ones with the tricycle and so uh, it's 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 fun to watch it's actually cute to watch it is and it is. Um, so they're they're a little bit more cutthroat than the, uh, yeah, <laughs> than the adults <laughs> now what how does a kid get involved in that what 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 does the family got to bring with them. Just themselves and their and their tricycles and a helmet and yeah. a helmet. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's. Oh important. yeah, most definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that is. I'll bet you more pictures are taken during that one event. <laughs> yeah. Of uh, the kids and they they really take it very seriously. I mean, they, they do. Well, they do. I almost a lost race. a toe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the rewards presented. And yeah. yeah. Everybody everybody gets a ribbon. Everybody yeah. gets yeah. a ribbon. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's that's fun. I don't know who came up with that idea, but uh, I don't know. You know, it's it's funny how uh, Jimmy. Uh, Raymond came on the committee maybe 20 years ago and said, how come you guys don't have a race? And was, what? He said, you know, a road race. No one in like the first 10 years of that committee ever thought 
of doing races. Because yeah. yeah, Jimmy's a runner. And Jimmy's yeah. a runner, <laughs> yeah. and knew how to, you know, set it up and yeah. direct it and get the right people, and that's become a very uh, well run race now of right? hundreds hundreds of entries hundreds, yeah 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 uh, ranging from i think eight years old to 70 something was uh, last year mm -hmm. yeah. i think that's one of the greatest things about this committee is nobody is here to get a promotion or to get a new job or but there's the ideas that flow around the table to, during the meetings are just amazing what people can come up with and and then how are you going to do it you know uh, like the setting up the uh, taste of enfield now it used to be in the parking lot or on the grass, and then somebody got the brilliant idea: what, can we get North Main Street shut down and get electricity over there? And, and that did become a really nice yeah. event. Now, yeah. it used to be very crowded and congested, but now it, it, it's set up very, very well yeah. because somebody came up with the idea. You yeah. know, that uh, yeah, very true. It, and it keeps the, the, the watching this event every year. It gets better, a little better here, a little better there. Tweak it here, move this there. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's it's not stagnant by any means. Uh, there are different events uh, that no one had thought of before, or no one knew how we could do it, how you could do it, how you could get, make it uh, yeah, happen. Uh, there was a brief discussion. Somebody said, "Well, I saw these guys at this event mm -hmm, and for the past yeah. five years. We've had now maximum velocity." Um, yeah, talk talk about that, Mike. I don't think we we talked about that. Uh, so five years they've been coming back um, North Main Street in front of where Higgins used to be, the Higgins area. Uh, it's a BMX bike show and, and skateboard uh, demo where these guys they they're crazy. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it, but they can they can launch themselves off the ramps. They're doing flips and we have bleachers set up so everybody can come and watch the free shows. We have two on Friday, three on Saturday, and three on Sunday, and it's wow. just it's another great addition to the to the celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys are good too. They go way up in the air. They've actually been on national TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, with uh, one of the sports shows, I don't know if it's yeah. CBS or ABC, one of them, but they've been on that. It's, yeah. it's a good, I'll tell you, it's fun. The kids get glued to it and just watch the what these kids uh, do. The problem's when we get glued to it and we kind of forget. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a job to be done. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? I can. There probably is. There is. But I encourage folks sure, to go on the website, infillcelebration.org, and just, you know. We probably should, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't list some of our main sponsors. Yeah, well. I mean. Yeah, good we, idea. We, we, we these, people, these people pay for Oh, yeah, right? Mass Mutual Financial is, is big. We got uh, Hartford Distributors, as you mentioned, the town of Enfield, and iHeartRadio. But we also got Family Ford. Audiola Dodge is uh, sponsoring the Taste of Enfield. Good. Leo Auto Group. Um, we have, uh, I'm going through my list of mine right now. The Advanced Hartford Auto Curry, is going to yeah. be part of things. And uh, Hartford Current is yeah. doing the, uh, the Twilight 5K. Yeah, already. they sponsored oh, good, that. Good. But we have a lot of media sponsors. Like JI, uh, you look for the program guide because mm -hmm. they put that together for us. And, yeah. and, and so. Our sponsors are, are incredible. Yeah, it's just. Because uh, it, a lot of people think that the Enfield celebration is the town of Enfield that's running it, and mm -hmm. it's really not. Yeah. Um, right. It's a private organization, mm -hmm. uh, it's incorporated, and it's paid for by our sponsors and our, our people that participate in the events. and. Mm -hmm. and um, the like so yeah. um, that's where all the money comes to run the, the yeah. organization yeah. any money if we do make money which is uh, not always the case because our budget is usually right almost to the penny uh, but if we do uh, have a good year and the weather cooperates with us and we uh, that gets put into next year celebration so the money doesn't you know leave what we do here on the uh, on the green it stays all part of the celebration uh -huh. yeah yeah, yeah. And I hate to use the word, but you, you, you just get one day at your brain, and you can really cause a real havoc with your uh, budget. Yeah, it absolutely you know? can. Yeah. So we uh, pray but for dry weather. Certain things yeah. we don't have control over. That's right. Over. That's, that's right. one of them. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Greg has a little bit of influence. I, yeah, I, I, apparently it's not been working the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I got to say, though, I mean, last year we had the, the rain came in the storm, and some folks left, obviously, because of the concern, but a lot of folks hung around, thousands of people. Wow. And I got to tell you, uh, when somebody mentioned to me, says that with what happened and the people that hung around, it was like such a warm, spirited community yeah. night. Everybody yeah. was just laughing because you get to a point where you can't sure. do anything about it. <laughs> right. So yeah. now you just, right. the fireworks are going off, and everybody is just saying, this is, this is family, this yeah. is community. Yeah. And that, this it is. is. You know, so everything has their blessings. So we, right. we don't want the rain, but right. uh, but you know, it happens. Yeah, so manage it. Yep. Yeah, very good. Anything else, fellas? I'm tapped. Okay, <laughs> I think we're done for today. I want to thank Comey and uh, 
We had Alex and Will also helping uh, for the production. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for making this happen. And uh, I want to thank our guests for being here. Uh, as, as always, it's a wonderful time for me to uh, reminisce with these guys about a great event. And thank all of you out there watching. And uh, please, if you haven't been to the 4th of July celebration, come on down. It's, it's remarkable. It really, really is. It's the largest attended social event in North Central Connecticut, year in and year out. I think the Boston Globe said it was one of the ten best places to spend in the top ten. Yep. Fourth of July weekend to see the fireworks. Well, yep. Uh, 10, 11, and 12 of July. Uh, have you, if you come, I, I promise you, you'll have a wonderful time. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye bye. <laughs>